this is very disconcerting because you can see me, but I can't see you. All I see is that row of bright lights, and I like to see the people that I'm talking to. So I, I need my baseball cap, and then I could, then I could do this. Um, and it's a delight to be with you, and I hope and pray that your experience during these days has been one of great joy, one of great hope, and one of great deepening faith. Because what you experience here is sort of a a peak mountaintop experience. And those don't happen every day. But even though they don't happen every day, they are tremendously important to us because they help us recognize what is available, what is accessible, what is possible for us when we give ourselves a little more fully over to God and to his grace. Our gospel today talks about treasure, and there's two different styles of finding a treasure. The first is is the treasure that's found by accident. A man is out plowing a field, and he comes across a treasure buried in that field. And he does what any prudent miser would do, He buries that treasure back where he found it, and then he goes and raises money to buy the field to deceive and defraud the person who actually owns that field, which doesn't sound very merciful or very just, but the point is that he recognizes the treasure and he works to achieve the goal of owning that treasure, buys the whole field for the sake of that treasure, which he found quite by accident. The second parable closely related to it is is the man who is in search of fine pearls. And so here's a man who deals in pearls, and he knows that somewhere out there, there is a larger, more perfect pearl. And he ardently searches for it and searches for it and goes to other merchants and he goes to the seashore and he's looking in clams and he's looking for that great pearl. And then he finds it. And he's overjoyed because there is found the treasure of his heart and he goes and sells all that he has in order to own that particular pearl. Any of you ever found a treasure? Me neither. Bummer, huh? But I challenge you, because I suggest to you that you have found a treasure. Maybe not necessarily the one you were looking for, and maybe you didn't even come across it by accident, because I hope that the treasure that you realize is a treasure that has been with you all along. And I wish our Lord had added a third parable. The parable of the man who walked by every single day, a picture hanging on the wall of his house. And it was the picture that belonged to his great-grandfather and handed it on to his grandfather and handed it on to his father and handed it on to him. And there it hung in his living room. And he saw it every single day. And then one day someone walks up and says, my gosh, how do you manage to own a Picasso? Do you know that that is worth 10 or 20 million dollars? And you say, no, I had no idea. The treasure was in his living room all along. My dear young people, you may have think that today And this weekend, you found a treasure buried in a field. Or that you found a treasure in someone else's house. But I suggest to you that what you found was a treasure that you have always possessed. You just never realized what a great treasure it was. And that treasure, if you are blessed and fortunate, as I consider myself blessed and fortunate, is a treasure which my grandparents and great-grandparents held in high esteem. And that treasure they handed on to their children and their grandchildren. 
and they handed it on to me, the treasure of faith, a rich treasure, a treasure without measure, a treasure of inestimable value, a great treasure. I hope that you have discovered that treasure and have discovered in your hearts a newfound appreciation for that treasure. And if even your parents and grandparents don't have a profound appreciation for that treasure, you now have an opportunity to go back to them and say, do you know what a great treasure we have? Do you realize what a great gift you have given to me? Do you have any idea of what you have given me as an inheritance? You have given me faith. Recently, someone recounted an event in the life of St. John Paul II. Some of you are so young, you probably don't even remember him anymore. Great saint, had a great love for the, for the young, would tell them often not to be afraid and to live their lives fully and abundantly. But he visited as Pope his hometown in Poland. And he came to the church where he had received each of his sacraments. And as he entered that church, he made a beeline over to the baptismal font. And at the baptismal font, he knelt and kissed that font. Because at that font, he realized that he had been given the greatest possible treasure. He had been given in that moment of his baptism a sharing in the life of God himself. And so that place where his faith was born became a locus, a place of devotion and reverence for him. And it challenges each of us then to ask, do I know where I was baptized? Do I know the precise place and time in which God's grace came to me in that sacrament of baptism? Do I know the date? Do I know the date of my baptism? I dare say, most of you do not. And I guarantee you that if you discovered a great treasure, you would remember the date upon which you encountered that treasure. Those who are married better know the date that they met their husband or wife. They better know the date when they became engaged. And they better know the date of their marriage. Failure to know that would be an affront and an insult. And yet, the Pope knew that the day of his baptism was the greatest day of his life. Greater than first confession, greater than confirmation, greater than being named bishop or pope. The day of his baptism. My dear young people, you share that same gift from God in your baptism. So I encourage you to uncover that treasure. To reflect upon it and to renew your devotion, dedication to it. Recognize that you are here today as young men and women of faith who come to Eucharist because of the grace of your baptism. What a great gift. What an inestimable gift that sharing in the life of God himself and how we have allowed that gift to languish in some closet, perhaps under the dirty sneakers. We have not given it the dignity that it is due. You have discovered on this these days here in our beautiful adoration moments you have discovered the treasure of the Eucharist. Well, you know very well that that treasure has been with you from the day of your baptism and has especially been with you and available to you since the day of your first Holy Communion. It's not a new treasure for you. It is, unfortunately, for many, an undiscovered or an unrealized treasure. 
but a treasure of inestimable worth and value nonetheless. And I hope and pray that that treasure which you have discovered and which you now have hold in such great value in your hearts that you do not again allow that treasure to sit off in some corner, unobserved, unrecognized, gathering dust. That, my dear young people, is the challenge to each of you. I don't know what your faith practice has been in your particular parishes, but if it has not been commensurate with the great gift and treasure which the Eucharist is, then a part of the grace of this week is that prayer to make a commitment to say, I'm going to Mass as often as I can and absolutely every Sunday, and I'm going to be reverent and pious and attentive and devout in the presence of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. I'm going to honor that treasure. I'm going to make that treasure real in my life, and I'm going to communicate the beauty and dignity and value and worth of that treasure to everyone whom I meet. I'm going to rejoice in that treasure, hold it dear, and show it off proudly to say to others, do you not know what a great treasure we have in our parish church? Do you not know that it is largely an undiscovered treasure? And you don't have to dig very deep to find it. You simply have to walk in the doors and sit in the presence of the Lord and open your hearts as you have done during these days. And that treasure shines brightly down upon you and you are enriched by your presence by the presence of the Lord in your midst. You have in your midst, in your parish churches, other treasures. My brother priests are treasures. You didn't know that, did you, fathers? What a great treasure our priests are. Round of applause for our priests. For our deacons, for our consecrated religious, they are treasures in the church. Treasures which have been sometimes tarnished, sometimes ignored, sometimes abused even. My dear young people, I hope you know that they are treasures. That they are men and women consecrating, devoting their lives to God to lead you to an appreciation of the treasure for which they have given and continue to give their lives. They are treasures. The faith which your parents have handed on to you is a treasure. Your parents are treasures to you. Now, you may find this hard to believe, but even your brothers and sisters are treasures to you. You have to scratch pretty deeply to find it, but it's a treasure nonetheless, I guarantee you. Do not allow these treasures to go unnoticed in your lives. Honor them. Esteem them. Live joyfully in the presence of those treasures. Rejoice. Rejoice that you have been so blessed by God to have that wonderful abundance of treasures. Now, you told me at the beginning that you've never discovered a treasure How many of you have now discovered a treasure? Absolutely. Praise God. We have a treasure. Let us not lose it. Let us not allow it to be tarnished. Let us give praise and worship to God for the great treasure that he so abundantly showers down upon us if we but open our eyes, open our hearts, open our ears to recognize the greatness of the treasure which he gives.